Hi, it's Steve with T-Quilts, and I'm here with the project using the Ortega 24-count fabric markers. They're the premium brand, and they are dual-tip markers. You have a fine tip and a chisel tip, and I thought that I would do a project with this. I actually did a product review for them, and this is a sponsored video. <music> Please note that Orteza sent me these products for free and that any products that you purchase I will receive a commission but I also wanted to share that I have a 10% off discount code. It's valid until November 20th, 2018 and it is T-Quilts 2. All one. I thought that I would try to do something for Halloween with the markers. I will link the video where I did the review of these markers at the eye above so just click the eye above. And I just want to tell you what I'm starting with here. I actually went on to Google and I just Googled Halloween coloring pages. And I just picked an image from that. And so I'm actually going to make a fabric postcard with this image. So what you're going to need is a piece of muslin or something light color to color on and then I took that piece of fabric and just added a piece of freezer paper onto the back and then I used a light box here to trace that image onto my fabric with the pencil. I just used a mechanical pencil at this point and the reason why I did not use the marker is because the marker is has a very thick line for tracing and I didn't also want the marker to bleed through my fabric so at this step you do want to trace with the pencil so now I'm just going to move my light box out and I have my fabric piece with the freezer paper still onto the back and I am using the freezer paper so that my underneath surfaces will not get damaged in addition to that I'm going to go ahead and color on another piece of paper as well. But the freezer paper should keep it from bleeding through. So I am going to use my tangerine, which is number 169. I know I'm going to need black, which is number 104. We'll need some browns, which is... A102 and A134. We are going to need probably the apricot color as well. It's more on the orange side. And then a couple of greens. So the greens that I'm going to be using, I'm going to try for 147. Or should I try 150? 140. I'll do 147. And then also 171. I'm trying to get some color so that I have some shading as I'm doing this. And I don't have a project for this already made up. So we are just going to experiment and see how the markers behave. Now one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to try to lightly mark. Because I do know that... If I press too heavy, I'm going to get too much of the pen, and it has a thicker pen. So the first marker that I'm going to use is going to be the tangerine. I know that I want my pumpkin to be in the orange color. I want it preferably in the darker orange color. So I am going to start outlining my lines with this pen. So I have my pumpkin just outlined for now. And I am now going to use the 
dark brown to outline so this is coffee color want to outline the stem and then I am going to use my chocolate to color that in and chocolate is number 102 So it looks like this brown color. My chocolate has taken over my dark color. So I'm just going to go back in with some black to give it some kind of highlight. And I probably am going to wait until that dry before I do the black. And so now I want my leaves that are going to be in the green color to be drawn out next and so I'm just going to outline my green leaves make sure you use a light hand when you're doing this so that you don't get any bleeders and keep your pen moving at all times So I have my darker green down. I would like to color in some of these leaves. I'm not sure how this is going to work. And then maybe come back with some of the, the darker green again to put in some lines. So I'm hoping that I can get like some light work here. So I'm trying not to put down a lot of color here. Just using a very fine hand. And then I'm going to also come back in with another color marker to mix up the colors a little bit. And you don't have to color these in all the way. And I'm just alternating right now between A147 and A150. Okay. And now on top of that, I'm going to go back in with this A 171 the darker green and I'm going to draw in some of those lines for the stems on my leaves So this is what I'm looking for is just some kind of shading and not a full coloring in. So now I'm going to go back up here and do a little bit of shading with, got to get the right color here, with apricot color number 124. I just want to do a little bit of shading right along the outer edges of the pumpkin.
so just a little bit of shading and could just do a very light dusting of color not trying to fill in the pumpkin just put a little color into it okay so that's what I have so far the next thing that I'm going to do is use 105 lemon yellow to color in the eyes and the mouth like it has a glow on the inside and then I'm just going to outline all of that in the black We're going to leave that tooth white. And now I'm just going to outline with this black. Okay, on this black, I need to wait until the actual area dries. I, I was premature in that. So I'll just go back up and put something in my stem. The pieces I wanted to redraw out here. And maybe outline my stem in black. So I do have a little bleeding going on where I tried to use the black where the ink was still wet. So you need to be very careful when you're trying to do two colors. You need to wait for it to dry a little bit. And for the sake of this video, I'm just going to continue on. But I'm going to use a light hand on my marker now. I am actually going to mail this card to my nephew. He is six years old. So he won't care that I'm playing around trying to learn new things. Okay. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and use a Sharpie pen just to outline around the mouth with a thinner pen. Since this is the only pen that I have in my area. And it is never going to be washed anyway so we can use the sharpie for that part all right so that is my card I think all that I want to do now is probably write just happy Halloween here so I can do that with the big markers and I'm gonna go ahead and use this tangerine orange just because it's going to a kid and I'm sure that he will love having more color on the card so I think I'm ready now to write the happy Halloween on here and I'm just going to start up in this left corner I do want to make sure that I leave room for me to trim because I'm going to have to trim this piece down to a four by six so that it can go into the mail system as a postcard
so I have everything now done to my piece I am actually going to let this dry and I'm going to come back in 24 hours before I go to the next step I am back with my piece it's been a few hours I have let it dry I even took an iron and heat set it and I took the freezer paper backing off the back so I now want to go to the next step I have a piece of Temtex or any kind of a stiff stabilizer because I uh, want it to be a little bit stiffer so if you have any kind of Temtex, Themtex, whatever brand is available, I am now going to attach it to this piece of scrap that I have here. And I am just going to use some fabric glue, but I'm not going to glue around the edges. I'm just going to glue so I can hold the insides down. So basically I'm just going to put a layer of glue down in the middle of my piece. And I don't want to get it close to the edges because I'm just going to stitch this onto the stabilizer. Give it just a good rubbing. And then I'm also going to go back to my urn and heat set this dry. So let me go do that as well. And the final thing that I need now is I need a backing piece to go on the back as well. So I am going to cut another piece of my muslin fabric. You could use a piece of paper if you want. It would make it so that you could just write on the paper. But I want to just go ahead and keep mine all fabric. So I just need like a piece that's slightly bigger than four by six because I am going to be squaring everything up after it's glued down. So again, I'm going to just put some glue in the middle. And I am going to now place this on the back close to the same area that I put the other piece. Again, give it a good rubbing just to hold it in place. And then I am now going to go heat set this and I'll come back for the next step. For my next step, I am going to square this unit now into four by six, the post office card size. And I want my pumpkin to be close to my edge on the left. And so now I can go ahead and cut. four by six and I'm actually going to cut it five and seven eighths by three and seven eighths just to make sure that I'm not over any kind of a limit I just want to make sure make it just slightly smaller and then our next step is going to be I'm just going to take white thread and just stitch around the outside edges to hold I'll do that and come back so I have just done an outline stitching around the outside. I didn't do a satin stitch because I didn't want it to come in and be a part of my design. But you can satin stitch your edge if you want. We only have a couple more steps left. On the back I just want to draw a line approximately 3 inches down the back side of my card so that I can put a mailing address. And my final step, I am actually going to address this later, but for, for the camera, my final step is that I am going to use some fray block or fray check 
on the edges just so that my piece doesn't ravel. And I'm just putting this on the edges so that they will not fray any more than what they already have. And like I said, this is for a six-year-old, so I'm not going to do a whole lot of decorating on this. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I have completed my project and this is my finished results and I'll be taking it to the post office so that they can hand cancel it. It may cost more to send, but I want to make sure that it's got the adequate postage on it. And I also use the Ortega marker system. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to check the link at the eye above. And I will see you next time. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will also... <laughs> so this completes my project. All I have to do is just address it. And I'm going to wait until my fray check actually dries before I do that. I will take this to the post office and have it hand canceled. It may cost a little more depending on your post office. But I think it will be safe so you know that your postcard will get there safely. I use the Ortega markers and I will leave a link to that to the video where I did a review of the marker system at the eye above and I will leave a link down below where you can go purchase these markers so that is it for this video I will see you next time thank you so much bye bye please note that Ortega sent me these products for free and that any products that you purchase, I will receive a commission. But I also wanted to share that I have a 10% off discount code. It's valid until November 20th, 2018. And it is T-Quilts 2, all one.